Welcome back to the live stream. If we haven't met before, my name is James Font and I believe the world of Australian wine is beautiful and complex. So I create videos for wine lovers to learn more about the world of wine. I'm back live streaming. I'm going to be bringing in a series whilst the Sydney lockdown continues for wine Wednesdays, 8, 8 p.m. each Wednesday at night as much as possible. And this evening, we're going to be looking at the best value wineries of the finalists that were shortlisted for the 2022 Holiday Wine Companion Award Ceremony. And that ceremony is going to be broadcast August 12th. So the next two are going to focus on the best value winery tonight. And next Wednesday night, I'm going to be looking at the best winery on that live stream on 8 p.m. next Wednesday night. And if you're just tuning in and you're watching along in the chat, let me know what your favorite part about the Olympics so far is. I think my favorite part so far was watching the Australian Boomers men's basketball bring out their lead on Argentina and power through. Or potentially, I think it was the women's basketball, the Opals, pulling off that 25-point lead over Puerto Rico to make it into their quarterfinals. So, so some exciting times making Australian sporting history in Tokyo 2020, which was delayed to 2021, which is now. And tonight, I'm drinking a wine. I'm drinking a wine that I'll bring up on screen and share with you, a Semion. I'm drinking a Semion tonight, the 2021 Six Degrees Semion from Thomas Wines, a delicious Semion. I got to pair that this evening with some spicy Thai food that we Uber Eats in, in amongst the Sydney lockdown. So... This one is kind of an off-dry style, which means this is a more of a sweeter Semillon style, slightly lower alcohol percentage, but it is absolutely delicious with the way it balances those sweet citrus flute flavors alongside the acidity and the sweetness. It's a great drinkable wine and pairs wonderfully with spicy foods and good times. And it's great value as well at $25 a, a bottle. It's a wine I enjoy and it's also one of my wife's favorites. That's a great wine there. And coming back to the live stream, we also have some sound effects. So that sounds like something to celebrate. as we get ready to think about some wineries that are offering great value, the best value um, from the holiday tasting team from what they saw. So let's jump into that now. So I'll hop over onto the screen sh short share now. So this is one of the first times that holiday are p publishing the shortlist in this way to be able to see who was in consideration and contention for some of the, who is a finalist that is going to go on to win a spot in the Winer Companions Award. So we'll get a glimpse into some of these wineries that were considered. So we're looking at the first one on this list, which is also this first picture here from Castelli Estate from the great southern region. So sourcing wines from all over Western Australia or Australia's Western Australia, Southwest specifically the great southern region, meaning the diverse offering spans a number of styles and price points and all are united by Castelli's ability to extract eloquent regional expressions from the vineyards and present them in a manner that is worthy of immediate drinking and cellaring potential too, with five $18 wines clocking in between 90 and 94 points. The value for money is outstanding. And let's see if we can find some of those jumping on to their website. 
one thing I love about these, I can the Halliday Wine Companion, I can see all the Castilli Estate wines and have a jump into that. And that's talking about the value rosette that goes with some of those wines to help identify them. So an example I imagine would be the 2020 Riesling would have scored as part of that value series. It was $18 when it was tasted. And let's see if the shop also has that there for a white wine looking at the Riesling. So we can see the sum Riesling. They've got some interest. Spa a sparkling Riesling is not something I've seen before. But we can see that this sun, the sum Riesling is actually even cheaper potentially on the website, which is awesome. So you can find the tasting notes on the website. And it has some cellaring potential there as well for an 18 dollar Riesling which is definitely not a bad thing as part of that but it's really interesting if I go back to that website going back to what else they have on offer if I can see if they have shop wines and can I just search I love it when they can search by price points so that we can go through and just like filter what's what. I suspect the Il Rouge 2018 is probably sitting outside of that. I think they've gone for potentially more of a Bordeaux style blend with that. With, yeah, potential to age for the next 10 to 15 years as part of that but what i'm really interested in is where things like their shiraz are coming into the mix from 2020 coming in at 18 dollars for value it has a drink now with its vibrant fruit forward character or you can sell it with confidence for the next six to eight years so looking at these wines some of these value ones look like they're coming in around that $18 mark. Western Australia is also a region known for their Cabernet Sauvignon. So let's see if we can jump into some of those. Got an estate Shiraz coming in at $34. Where does the price climbs a little bit? The Uno 2019. A Syrah. So that's a Shiraz. I wonder if that's more old world style. But they also, it looks like the Sum series, Franklin River, five to seven years. So it looks like they're kind of really punching at a value range coming in under $20 with some of those wines. And some of these wines might be harder to find in a bottle shop. So if we go to the second winery on the list, we're looking at Castle Rock Estate, um, where Robert Deletti has spent years building an enduring reputation for cool climate and exceedingly elegant wines of the Poron Garup. His wines particularly, but not exclusively at Rieslings, are consistently brilliant and all priced under $40. This year, nine wines that were priced from a tantalizing $20 to just $35 won ratings from 90 to 97 points, making Castle Rock a shoe in nomination for this award. And we're looking here at that second photo of Castle Rock Estate as part of that. So let's jump on over to the page and see if we can find i'm curious about what that 97.1 wine was that they listed i'm wondering if that was potentially a riesling as part of that so as well as the value filters on here you can also search and filter by the time that it was added at least I could when I looked at it on my phone last time. Saw it by 
update added newest to oldest. So there's a 96 point Riesling in there. 96 point Riesling. A 97 point Riesling as well. In amongst the groups. So their Rieslings are particularly impressive of as part of this crop of wines. One I'll be keen to check out for my bias for Shiraz will be to see how this is performing. Um, this Shiraz at $30 on their website. So if we go to the Castle Rock website. So they've got their section of Rieslings coming in at various price points. At this stage is looking at between, yeah, the $21 to $35 mark, which is great. You can see potentially the different styles. Let's go to Skywalk. Got potential to sell her up to 10 years there. Looks like this is one of, I want to say 92 points, but there's just so many reviews there to go along with it for this particular Riesling, but it's in their new release section. So let's see what else is in there. They've got Cabernet Sauvignon. They've got the Castle Rock Estate Shiraz. Which is in one front 93 points. Campbell Madison is one of the tasters. He tasted, I believe, this wine from 2017, but this is the 2019 vintage. So it's a cool climate Shiraz with the plum, fruit, spice, and black pepper characters. And it has the ability to sell her for eight to ten years as part of that wine, which is exciting and unique so it'll be interesting to see how it goes a 30 dollar 32 dollar price point not quite as kind of compelling as a value when you look at some of those rieslings that were on offer towards that 21 dollar mark looking at these rieslings okay carefully set up to 21 years for 20 dollars like that could be a hidden gem if you're a big fan of Riesling here. With cellaring potential that could go well and truly into the future. And green tropical fruits and fajoya. That's such a f hard word to say and pronounce, but I only remember tasting those in New Zealand. I'm not sure where to find them in australia but they are delicious and finger lime on the nose with how it smells and oh it's on the palate as well Pejoya, Pejoa, and lime evident on the palate backed by some floral notes it should give some lovely richness to the mid part the reasoning acid structure is in excellent balance with the sugar and provides a clean and refreshing finish so this one really does pique my curiosity on the Riesling front. Now, if we have a look at the Deep Woods Estate from Margaret River, the Fogarty Grip Chief Winemaker and Halliday Wine Companion Winemaker of the Year 2019, Julian Langworthy has built a reputation nationwide for his jocular and irreverent approach to almost everything except the outstanding wine he creates. He and his team of winemakers, Andrew Bretherton and Emma Gillespie, make seriously styled, seriously structured wines from great vineyards within the Margaret River. Never underestimate their ability to wow and please. They consistently clean up wine shows with wins, including the 2019 jimmy watson trophy so they are one i am aware of probably more for their cabernet savignon off the top of my head as keeping an eye on some of those it looks like they have a 97.1 there 
what are some of the things that were added most recently. It was the oldest, so that cab sav at 97 points is ranking highly. The reserve Margaret River Cabernet Sauvignon, as well as the Hillside Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, uh, it's a few interesting ones I'm plucking out. So it was recognized for its top value last, a year, two years ago actually, in their thing, 2038, salary potential but coming in at $75, so on the more expensive side, but when value is proportional to the price, you could be finding great value in a $75 wine that it could be drinking like a $300 wine, for example. So let's have a look at this 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon from the East State or the Estate Hillside Margaret River. Coming in closer to $28, a much more affordable price point there. It's a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Malbec as part of this. And it won a trophy for the best Cabernet Perth wine show in 2019 so it's exciting to kind of find hidden gems like this that have great potential and could pack a punch and see how that style goes over the long term and this g5 is a curious one as well because i'm yep 50 dollars, but 2051 i'm wondering if this is a blend of multiple vineyards or it's actually from a single block, but the single block is called the G5. Fragrant, medium bodied and silky, riddled with cassis, raspberry licorice, fennel flowers, supple fruit, and salivating balance. Will require a decant. The tannins call present on the roll call. Sell it with total confidence, but drink it whenever you want because it is absolutely beautiful. So that coming in at $50, but can go the distance for another 30 years. That's good. And even better is that it is screw cap as part of that winery. So let's have a look at their website as well to see if those prices are lining up at, when we look at the Cabernet Sauvignon from Deep Woods. I'm also an IT nerd, so I immediately notice and love that their website is deepwoods.wine. So you can find wine domains at .wine, so I think that is pretty awesome, as that's part of me being a nerd and knowing that they've come up with those domains as part of the new top-level domains in the last decade, which is exciting. So let's shop some of the wine. See what's good. Yes, I am over 18 years old. And they have some reserve wines coming in. $65. Club price, $65. Some grand selection, some essential estates. I go direct the 2020 Hillside Cabernet Sauvignon. You can buy it with Afterpay. Receive 10% off your first purchase. Got their tasting notes there. Proof for up to eight years from the vintage. What I find interesting is that it looks like they try and do it by the different brands. So if I go on a tangent towards Lakes Folly, then all of a sudden I'm thinking about the Lakes Folly wine that is made up in the Hunter Valley with the Cabernet that they're doing there. I'm not even sure if some of these would be in stock um, from driving past that winery. This looks like quite... For a website that I held high hopes for when I went here, their online store... Feels a bit, oh, this is still Deep Woods, this story, a place. Got a handful of pages, but when I, yeah, go to the shopping, their wine. 
it just feels like I go low to high with pricing. I feel like their range is much more condensed, much smaller than what is available when I look at something like Halliday's Wine Companion and I look at their list of wines as part of that. So if I go see all the Deepwoods Estate wines, unless it's just seeing multiple vintages of the same year or they've sold out of just a lot of things like Cabernet Malbecs, Chardonnays, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnays, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot, got a museum release. I'm not really seeing that Malbec there, so unless they've sold out of... Oh, sorry, it was Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. That's there. I'm wondering, yeah, they might have sold out of more of the other kind of vintages. But yeah, no, I was looking for a Cabernet Malbec blend there. But that looks like it's sold out as well. So potentially seeing some good value in and around the 2020 Hillside Cabernet or the Estate Cabernet as part of that process. But that's interesting. That's more of a drink now, Cabernet. Savignon when it's blended with the Merlot. So some good things in here. I suspect Deep Woods won't win with this range of wine from seeing what, what's on the list there. Let's have a look at Duke's Vineyards next. So if you're a fan of Riesling, you must try Duke's Magpie Hill Reserve Riesling at $45. It is one of Australia's greatest examples of the variety, making it a ridiculous bang for buck proposition. The wines are made by Robert Deletti Castle Rock and are famed for their cool climate, elegance, light touch, and finesse. The vineyard is planted to just Shiraz, Cabernet, and Riesling, ranking among the very best in the region and the finest in the state. That's an interesting write-up. So the same winemaker as Castle Rock Estate. So that Robert Deletti is doing a good job to make it on there multiple times with the wine that he is making. And if we see more of their wines, Cabernet Sauvignon coming in at 97 points. For $42. That is not bad. A concentrated wine there by the looks of things from that review. But the one that they highlighted was the Magpie Hill. It's power length and lay upon the kefir lime wrapped in a pure silver cloak of a city running through but never challenging the fruit. Duke Ranson has every reason to suggest this one of the best reasons to come for this jeweled vineyard at the heart of the estate plantings. So I'm wondering if they were talking about earlier the 2021 Riesling. They didn't list the vintage when we were looking at their website, but that is coming in $42. So I suspect they were talking about the 2021 Part of that, and life is too short to drink bad wine. So it has all received multiple awards over time. Wine of the year in 2019, which is definitely commendable about us. Let's go to their store. It looks like they do the price per case. They do some sparkling. This was the one that was highlighted. Bottle price. $42 seller for 25 years. It's got some potential. You can buy a case at a time. By the looks of things. Compared to bottle at a time also means that it's likely favoring that 
so that Shiraz will probably be case at a time and with a dozen bottles aged 10 to 20 years the descriptions aren't particularly lengthy so I might go back to the Halliday's Wine Companion for more of a lengthy description on some of those thinking about the single vineyard Shiraz being a Shiraz fan myself so looking at a cool climate Shiraz people get around white pepper exotic spice and red fruit abundance and opulence with restraint core of intense fruit and fine structured tanners this is a banger a beautiful wine that whistles a tune of purity what an expressive red licorice to boot absolutely yes i'm just having a look at the scores of some of those wines there on this list i think just looking at the date out of newest to oldest just looking at those first few entries seeing the scores they're 95 plus here i think duke's vineyard could be my prediction at this stage for the wine the best value winery just looking at the points that they've scored and looking at the price point of some of the wines here like there's nothing coming up here that oh there's a one that's coming up here that would be kind of premium super premium in terms of that but like coming in equals three thirty dollars a bottle divided by six bottles my math ain't so good when i'm typing fifty five dollars a bottle it's a very reasonable for a cabernet at 98 points i would say so it looks like they are definitely doing something right as part of the wines that they're making here whole bunch bunch of fermented shiraz ruby celery spice elegant long intense finish a reserve shiraz as well reserve shiraz cabernet sauvignon i, I think coming in like these probably have great value behind them. 2017 invitation was not rated as highly. 180, $35 a bottle. Coming in at 95 points. That's going all right when we're thinking about the Duke's vineyard there. So let's move on to the Harewood a state in Denmark. So Harewood is lodged among the carry trees in Denmark, arguably one of the prettiest wine regions in Western Australia. The wine offering spans a host of varieties with styles, most of which are sourced in the vineyards of Great Southern, refreshingly priced between $20 and $30. A lineup of no less than nine labels clocked in scores between 90 and 95 points this year. Let's have a look at what is going on there see some of the wines sort by let's riesling has been something that is standing out to me tonight with what has been recognized some pinot gris semillon sauvignon blanc blend the riesling a uh, great southern white blend i suspect let's open it up before i say it but ended by gewurz and raising a proper white brand blend all coming together i can't say off the top of my head what kind of style but drink by kind of now it would be a really interesting blend of wine that particular one 2020, Barker Estate, Southern Pinot, Riesling 2019, 2019. So I think they're going back a bit now from the current 
release year. Be interesting to see a 94 point rated Pinot coming in at $30. Pinot are often a bit more expensive. Each label is unique and generated by vineyard data. Very attractive. Coffee oak leads a charge on the nose, closely followed by cherry and strawberry. This is reminding me of a non-fungible token if each label is unique. Makes me curious. So let's jump into the wines that they have on offer. The 10,000 unique labels generated from vineyard data. There's a part of me that wants to see this and figure out what's going on here. It looks like they've applied the same effect through a Photoshop over time or generative design algorithm. There's a unique one of a kind of labels to be produced. That is incredible to think about in terms of the process that would have gone into that level of detail for making those designs. This is one I this is I can I'll do a video all on this alone. The Harwood Estates labels could be this even by Australians. One of the last isolated regions. Wow, I'm loving the graphics here, like the scroll through the Australian landscape, looking at the different latitude. No longitude, but heat elevation. My sucker for statistics. This is really impressive. This is a website like I haven't ever kind of seen before in terms of quality. My only kind of critique is like, how do I find your wine? Uh, it looks more like a website showcasing art than wine at this stage. But try, I, yeah, trying to find out how to buy your wine from a business perspective. It's a beautiful website, but trying to find the wines, a bit more challenging than I expected. So the Pinot Noir is there, the info. A few different clones are listed. The Riesling is there. Finesse Fresh Haas, free from harsh phenolic characters and deeper colors associated with grape pressings. Interesting. The Chardonnay Estate, that's the blend at $21. It's been produced from a handle of estates, F block. Dijon clones. Yeah, the Flux V was one we were looking at. It had the label thing going on. Really interesting. Brewing, so 18 months. Don't have anything about how aging. Sense nose of black cherry and dark fruit supported by complex hints of licorice and spice. Evil, cool climate, coastal vineyards in Denmark, Great Southern Western. It's a sparkling. So, yeah, they've got a quite a nice range. What's going on in this Shiraz section? Benzinki, cold soaked, with specific, well, prior to fermentation, with specific yeast isolated to burgette dough, this pre fermentary unit permits a gentle extraction of tannins whilst enhancing fruit intensity. I wonder what that would mean for the longevity of this wine. 
So a blend of premium parcels of Cab Sav. This has been an interesting one. I feel like I'd be buying more for the art than the wine at this stage. Um, from what I can see with Harwood, but let's look at Lake Breeze. This one is one I am not related to. I might send them a message and see what they think, but my name is James Follent. The Lake Breeze Wines is run with the privilege of the Follett family. It's privileged to a deep history. The family has been tending its vines on the shores of Lake Alexandria since the 1880s and picking up hundreds of trophies and gold medals in major wine shows across the country for decades. They are fabulous ambassadors for an oft neglected region and embody the heart and soul that we all love about Australian wine making. It's a bonus that their wines happen to represent some of the best value in the country. So let's have a look at them. They've got like braids. I don't suspect. I'll sort by the grouping. Newest to oldest. Got some, hmm, all right, but nothing kind of over 95 points there as part of that. I'm going to have a quick sticky beak at their Shiraz from that. A Vermentino got 88 points. What's the price? $25, not bad, not bad at all as part of that. Released in prodigious vintages only. Mulberry pie with cream, all in new glass, a tans and nicely wrought oak and grape, finely seamed with plenty of clarity. The acidity, papillary, natural, peppery, and energetic cutting, nice rail against the generous swell of fruit, impeccably made. That's a really interesting combination there as part of that wine. Coming in at forty dollars, got ageability over a decade. They're wanting me to sign up wines of prom provenance, award-winning wines. Seems to be a lot more wines on their website than what was submitted to them. You can get a magnum of Cabernet. From 2013, medaled at multiple wine shows. So, so wow, so for another 10 to 15 years, and it's already from 2013. I was looking at like a 20 year lifestyle. Uses fruit produced from the 45 year olds on the Follett family vineyard. There's a part of me that almost wants to pick it up as kind of close to my namesake for that. Malbec and Moscato, Old Vine Grenache, Naughty Nanny, Rare Front Frontig. I've never heard of a Frontignac, I've heard of Cognac. Winemaker's Selection Shiraz. Selling over it. My turn. Yeah, coming in at $45. Let's see. Whoop. There goes that one. Extra tab. This is something that has piqued my curiosity. I've never heard of this. Good sense of humor. Old. White Ponte Mac Vineyard. Ah, it's like a musket. I'm not sure if that's a star. That's puts an ambiguous question mark over that wine and what's going on there for me. But it's got, yeah, not as a compelling offering. They're looking at that. Mike Press Wines, 
seems to be kind of lower price point entirely between 12 and 15 dollars in a league of its own so the story of mike press is well told he retired from a an illustrious winemaking career with a big icon companies to plant a vineyard at a cool 500 meters of elevation in Lobethal in 1998 returning to wine making was never the plan but he soon found himself personally delivering tantalizingly priced bottles to increasingly a list of loyal fans two decades on his wine continues to improve as mike settles into his groove and his vines attain maturity a single vineyard cool climate wines priced almost entirely between 12 dollars and 15 dollars is such a bargain sen- sounding there coming from south australia so wine's getting a variety of ratings this is ultimately up to you i guess my jimmy's block adelaide hill shiraz catches my attention m- immediately as part of that and there's also different things around the single vineyard adelaide hills pinot noir 2025 very much more wines for drink now accessible pinot is probably what i'm liking most about this under 20 dollars pinots are hard to find at a price point like this and he is getting great reviews there yeah their wine You can buy it by the case. I'm wondering if it only sells by the case. Look at that. It's already sold out that Pinot Noir that I was talking about. Looking at that, seeing the value even before. I'll jump onto that. Sure as. 14.7 sink string now will sell for 5 to 10 years. Favorite red meat. Is the MP1 share, but the venue manager is a different idea. We should get a label all of its own. Hear me tell me about this book. Of... Very nice. So cool. It looks like a great, easy drinking Shiraz as part of that style there which is exciting so that one definitely has some potential i think the mic press wines when we think about what they've been through and what they've been producing have a quick look about the Stella Bella wines and the West Cape wine as well. Scuttlebutt Range and the Mossa flagship. Cabernet Chardonnay country from the Margaret River. Two thirds is one of one value rosettes under the guide of Luke. That's an interesting amount i noticed that they haven't kind of necessarily showcased the scores that have come out it was told us 91 90 so they're all kind of great value within their price range cabernet seven yon 2037 coming in at 90 dollars got us a value rosette i wonder if they assess it like that and in Sangiovese, this is an interesting find. Very interesting. I've got a Sangiovese coming out there. And they've also got a got whole butt cabinet Shiraz. I mean, at $19. Now let's check out their website. Sign up and win.
Interesting. Thought and I will write it. Have an eye was well rated. The different kind of brands as part of that. Let's go to the shop. 9070. I don't think this one will get the best value at winery, but they've got some interesting ones in there. The Moscato, Cabernet Malone, some things going there. It'd be more interesting to kind of see how they compare. If I was ever to do a trip to the Margaret River, see where they fit in. Nothing necessarily catches my eye there. As we go down the list necessarily, I'm not particularly captivated by any of those. So let's have a look at West Cape. How wines from Mount Barker, the state in Mount Barker epitomizes value for money, consistently producing superb and satisfying wines that offer joy and pleasure beyond their price of the West Cape's house and submissions price between $17 and $30, scoring between 88 and 95 this year. Nine Wood Value Rosettes in the 10th was only a dollar off qualifying, which is impressive. So they are striking me as contenders as part of this competition. So I add newest to oldest, Chardonnay. They've got a Riesling that is ranking as well. I think the Riesling has almost been part of the theme of tonight. Tempranillo as well. Riesling coming at $22. Yep. Got aging potential for oh, 10, 15 years. Looking at this Shiraz, we see mm, almost French in style. Thinking about the Northern Rhone. Exceptional value, mid-weight and versed half a table coming in at $17. A great wine to drink now by the looks of things. As part of that, as well as a Tempranillo coming in at $22. They definitely have some things going for them. Let's check out their website now. See how that is going. See what is going on there. Loading for me. Escape. West Cape website, West Cape Power Wines, West Cape Power Wines, it's a mouthful to say, shop our wines, all wines, like they're doing kind of cases at 12, as well as bottles, so a good mix in there. Have a Frank, that's exciting to see. That's interesting seeing a Cabernet Franc on there. Book it ends, Cabernet Savignon, two steps, Shiraz, Q, sparkling Shiraz. So they've got a pretty good range there on their website as part of that. It'll be interesting to, see, interesting to see how they go. And then we're on to Zanadu wines from the Margaret River. No estate in Australia offers more comprehensive value for money than Xanadu Estate this year. That's a really interesting statement. It almost, <laughs> it almost means that this could be the, the one with an opening sentence like that. So no estate in Australia offers more comprehensive value for money than Xanadu Wines this year, amassing an unmatched 16 value rosettes. The majority for its $20 Exmoor and $26 DJL series, but the extending all the way up the tree to the $110 flagships, it's not possible to overstate the exceptional value for money that this offering represents with every wine scoring in the 90s and as high as 98. All credit to Glenn Goodall and Brendan Carr's desire to let the fruit do the talking. 
Their sensitive winemaking has yielded astoundingly impressive wines, the very best of which belong alongside the most elite in the Margaret River in any given year. That is an absolute rave review looking at what is being said there. And I've opened up the develop window and let's see what else is said about those Xanadu wines. Looking at that listing of newest to oldest. Yeah, lots of value rosettes going on there. Try and get a list of those special value ones at 97 97 yes i am of legal drinking age let's see how that goes as a wine at cabernet sauvignon looking at that the sauvignon blanc semillon blend seems to be a thing in the margaret river with how they do it saying to go on there 96 points for one of those Dutch licorice on the nose, showing up part tangentially silly intention from this pristine fruit, such fine that you can eat tannins curly inlaid into the fruit without being hidden. I want to understand since why this shape structure pure cassis fruit, ushering it through a long and lingering finish. $80 wine. Premium end of the spectrum, but it has like 30 years of cellaring potential in it, which is exciting to see. Looking at this other one, I think that was something similar. Same $80 wine. I suspect maybe a different vintage. I think I opened the second tab. This top value back in 2019. Apple herb citrus. Powerful as part of that. So that was a previous year's rating on that. If we look at their shop, up to 25% off all wines. Not a bad, bad pricing. Exmoor, Shiraz, a Cabernet Sauvignon. They do a Semillon as well at the $28 mark. I'm liking their websites. They've got a fortified Shiraz. That one my wife might like. And for his cheap flavor of cheap British fruit, I'm sure I write fruits and fresh loaded rum raisin chocolate and hints of spice. Interesting to see what my wife would think of something like that. The Exmoor Cabernet Sauvignon, Suffolk Towns Bell and Wine, persistent finish, $20. The Exmoor Shiraz, medium, full bodied, lovely persistence of flavor. Shiraz, a little bit of Viognier, purple red hues, boysenberry violet floral notes, red confectionery, licorice straps, subtle toasty oak influence, a medium to full bodied wine offering a depth with inky ripe forest fruits, blackberries, red currants, and spice. This juby fruit and approachable tannins combine to produce a generous wine with subtle structure and lovely persistence of flavor. They have the pH as well on there which is good. I'm liking their kind of Instagram scroll at the bottom as well. It's part of branding. This is a wine club offer. You get 25% off, but what is the commitment? Yeah, yeah, 15% off. Get 25% off as a platinum member. 12 bottles every few months. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing to come together. I definitely, I'm, I think this would be one of the top three websites we've been on tonight. Really good, really solid. Cart six pack, really clear. Got a gift voucher there as well. But I think it will be between the Xanadu wines and the... Duke's Vineyard for the title of the best value winery this year as we look at the 2022 Holiday Wine Companions Awards. 
the best value winery. So thank you for tuning in to the live stream tonight. I'm tuning, I'm trying to live stream at 8 p.m. each Wednesday night whilst the Sydney lockdown is on and happening next week. We're going to be looking at the best winery finalists in the Halliday Wine Companions Award before the award ceremony is broadcast on August 12th. So we'll be going through the short lists for the best winery next week on the live stream at 8 p.m. on Wednesday night, which will be exciting. And if you have any more questions about wine, please put them in the comments below or in the chat if you're watching now and I can help answer them for you, create a video about those in the future as well, potentially. So thank you for tuning in tonight. It's exciting to be back live streaming and also being able to include sound effects Yay! as part of the live stream. It's had some fun and excitement to it in a different kind of way. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Remember, wine is best enjoyed with friends and family. I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and follow the stay-at-home orders and respect the government guidelines if you're in the Sydney, greater Sydney area. And we'll see you next week, 8 p.m. Wednesday night to talk about the best winery shortlist for the 2022 Holiday Wine Companions awards it's exciting i think the best value winery from tonight is either going to be dukes from what we looked at tonight the duke vineyards or xanadu wines it'll be interesting to see what gets announced as part of those 2022 awards after reading through this short list tonight otherwise i'll hopefully see you on the live stream 8 p.m next wednesday any questions let me know in the comments below if you're watching on the replay. Otherwise, goodbye.